Training agroforestry with black belts is what I'm here to do. This is an exploration in finding the cutting edge, learning from other practitioners, going to see older sites. Here in the far south of Brazil, very similar climate to New Zealand. If you train with black belts, people who've been doing it for longer than you, that's the way to improve at anything. It's Brazil round two, baby. This is the oldest syntropic agroforestry system, this food forest, the oldest one in this region of South Brazil. Loquats, bananas, eucalyptus. Feels kind of funny, like being here at the edge of the rainforest, chainsaws running back there, cutting trees down, and on the surface it might feel ugly, it might feel like the exact thing that we're trying to oppose. It's like a popsicle of the soil. Growing food from within the rainforest. Intergenerational lands starting a new cycle. Bringing back the complexity that it had. We are putting this climax species inside them. If it, we live to nature, it would have to have a bird, but like we are the birds, like even like this. Like. As agriculturas ancestrais, que são as agriculturas para quais a gente remete, elas são agriculturas de manejo de floresta. Há várias plantas que se perderam do regime das florestas aqui e que nós acreditamos que é possível restaurar. But in the reality, the farmers, if they don't have income directly from their forest, they don't have any motivation to plant forest. The desertification, this is what it looks like. It looks like a desert. People from the environment, they think that the, the dune is natural. We think it's like degradation. It's not easy to grow anything there, so it would have to be some species that people consider to be like Eucalipto, grande amigo nosso da agrofloresta, não deixamos ninguém falar mal dele. É um grande aliado. And the most important thing for me, we have to understand the human life inside, together, living in the nature, not apart. They planted 5,000 trees out in the landscape. In each of these pots, multiple different species. Custom auger, which is the perfect size. It's a living nursery to support the other systems. <laughs> We're people of the forest, and I think this form of agriculture reflects that more than anything else. Right now, I feel like I'm a blue belt. I am a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, but I also feel like I'm a blue belt in agroforestry. It's not so inspired by Ernst Goch here, it's more inspired by the native indigenous cultures. Create a beautiful handprint around yourself and where you live in your ecosystem. Who we'll create that handprint? It was an experiment in seeing how much responsibility I can voluntarily take on. And I think when you trust the universe like that, the universe always has your back. The best way to learn something quickly is to surround yourself with experts. That's what I'm doing here. Yesterday I made it to the south of Brazil. I only spent time in central and northern Brazil last year on the trip. It was fantastic, but the only problem is it wasn't climate similar enough to New Zealand. I just landed at Namaste's new site. If you don't know who Namaste is, one of Ernst's best students for over 20 years. And I just made it to their new site. I've been working here for about three months. So we got here yesterday. After taking a surprise trip to Vegas, learning from Alex Hormozzi. That was after about a month in Florida, spending time with other consultants, practitioners. It was great to spend time with Matt Reese, the legend. All right, let's see what we see. Oh, wow. Kind of zone one right by the house, and then this other area where the agroforestry is like really gonna be happening when they're gonna run courses, they're gonna teach here. This is gonna become a school, a school for agroforestry. People can come from all around the world, learn, do their courses, help manage and plant these systems. Super sandy, very much like my place. This is what it can look like when you start an agroforestry system. 20, 30 year old trees, a lot of eucalyptus that have mostly been cut down. Now eucalyptus have this terrible reputation of drying out the land, taking all the nutrients and nothing else can grow beneath them. They provided the perfect foundation to cut them down and begin an agroforestry system. This is my new friend Ita. He's here at the site doing some awesome agroforestry work. Então aqui a gente está montando uma horta, né? Com agricultura de processos. Primeiramente a gente pega o tratorito para afofar o solo. Em seguida a gente coloca os caminhos, né? Os tocos de madeira, os 
os caminhos para a gente poder pisar em cima e não compactar mais o solo. E depois a gente pega o resto de folha né, e distribui no canteiro. Aí dessa forma a gente vai atrair microvida, né? fungos, bactérias benéficas para o solo e depois a gente planta. People from the environment, they think that the, the dune is natural. Like, they think it's like degradation. We are thinking about starting to plant something to hold it. And it's not easy to grow anything there. So it would have to be some species that people consider to be like invaders. Because if we put just a native there, it's not gonna grow. People have to understand that sometimes the exotic plants like this, casuarina, it's from Australia. It's here and it's just making a work during some time. It's not gonna be there forever. People don't, don't understand this a lot yet. This is crazy. We just made it to the top of this desert. Less than a hundred years ago this was forested and now it's this. We used to have cows here, here in the past. Helped with the degradation. Lots of cows and uh, cassava monoculture. A recipe for desertification. <laughs> you guys have vision of one day like helping to reforest this space? Yeah, then? we want to do this, but we're gonna have to co to get a deal with the environmental because I think if we start planting, they could just come and just remove everything. So... To keep it as a sand dune. Yes, to keep it as a sand dune. <laughs> Yeah, it's something we want to do. Talking about how restoration of the mind has to happen as well as in the ground because using these invasive species are reframing in your mind of what's good and bad. Someone needs that. We woke up super early. Vamos to Mutirão! Plantar florestas! Então, eu vou falar para o serviço. We're in a secondary growth forest, lots of native species, tons of eucalypts creating these lines. All these lines are going up the slope. It's amazing what happens when 30, 40 people show up and get their hands in the soil. Folhas ajuda a planta se adaptar bem, né? Mas que eu conheço para todas. Being in South Brazil specifically is opening my eyes to new ways of practicing agroforestry. Focus in the beauty, the beauty and the organic distribution. Don't producing only focus. Possible with Picard. Tenho muita dificuldade em inglês. It's beautifully done. <laughs> this is Bernardo. We met last year and I've just come to his site. Now we're managing this agroforestry. And this is called Cabruca. Cabruca. Development in Bahia, south of Bahia, very complex and interesting. It's like being a painter in the Renaissance, but instead of art, it's the Renaissance for agriculture. And it's his creative practice. It's an art, you're an artist in the Renaissance of agriculture. It's a beautiful time to be alive. Bernardo was just showing me his nursery. In each of these pots, they're planting multiple different species. High strata with a low strata, or an emergent strata with a medium. Very cool.
been 12 months since the management has happened here, but you can still see a lot of the species and what's happening. There's seven meters between productive lines. In between each productive line, there's a biomass line. This is a productive line. It's got avocados, it's got lemons. There's a bunch of other stuff, cassava. And then on this, in between these two lines, Mombasa grass and then the biomass line. It's a living nursery to support the other systems. Everything's going into seed and all that material gets to get spread around the whole landscape. So this is really such a valuable part, it supports everything else around it. This whole area is managed as a community. All these food forests that kind of just like pockets nestled around the landscape create space and privacy and production and reforestation for all the homes around. It's very steep right here and the line just goes straight up. All this organic material on the edges that you're meant to be walking on. You're not meant to be walking on the soil, you, you walk on the organic material. More parana nut, avocado, pineapple, acai, anona. The tree lines are on this slope, going straight up the slope. And they're spaced every three meters. One, two, three, tree line, one, two, three, tree line. In between the tree lines is where they have the bananas. They take up a lot of space, the management's quite finicky and difficult, along with some roots and tubers, taro, yakon, cassava. But in the tree lines are where all the actions happen. You can see right there, a tree line just shoots directly up. And this is where a huge diversity of species live, right? There was already trees growing here. They cut them down, they organized the material, and now they're growing food. This is the area that we were clearing this morning. Fox in the beauty. And now we're planting more using this custom auger, which is the perfect size for the seedlings that they grow here. The yakon, turmeric, and the acai palms. So we're gonna combine them, plant them into those holes that we were drilling. have this area about 10 years to receive this new new technology that agroforest system and it's a different way to live to understanding the nature and the most important thing for me is the main information about ecology the ecology is the meaning the biggest meaning because they have to understand the human life inside together living in the nature not apart so you can see with the view climbing to the top of this watershed yeah so that area on the hill right there we'll go see it it looks like it's just been prepared these areas are already happening how cool so we've got this tree line here tons of organic material the tree line looks beautiful there's multiple all sorts of species in here. Bananas, acai, inga, ice cream bean. Is this a Japanese raisin tree? Mulberry, guavas, sugar cane, loquats, bananas, eucalyptus. Oh, look at this. This is so cool. This is the oldest, largest Parana nut. Castanha de Parana that I've ever seen. I'm loving this already. This is the oldest syntropic agroforestry system, this food forest, the oldest one in this region of South Brazil. If you wanna watch the full uncut video, it's in the fellowship, go check it out. That's where we do live discussions every single week. That food forest over there was planted about three, four years ago, but this area here, this is organized organic matter. There's organic material in here on the inside. All the big coarse material on the edges of the beds, straight up the slope. And then obviously we got this beautiful backdrop here beautiful South Brazil landscape. Philosophical system. <laughs> this is super funny. We're standing on the very edge of rainforest right there, 14 years old, and right here has been recently cleared. And I just used that word with Bernardo and he got after me for using the word cleared, which implies like you're cleaning the landscape out of the organic material and you're not doing that. He called it organized death. You can see this material has been organized, resetting the system. So I'm standing right here on the boundary between the rainforest and 
what's being ready to be planted in agroforestry. Even for me right now, it feels kind of funny, like being here at the edge of the rainforest, chainsaws running back there, cutting trees down. É um trabalho que Nicolas vem desenvolvendo aqui no Nascente, né? De articulação institucional, de políticas. Essa é uma área de duas hectares que nós estamos fazendo uma fruticultura regenerativa, né? É um trabalho muito bacana porque é pioneiro, é uma das primeiras planilhas aí que a gente tem notícias aprovadas, né? Estamos quantificando, né? Gerando números para projetos futuros, né? Mas floresta não é uma mancha verde. A floresta é um complexo de relações estruturais, de acoplamentos. É um sistema já que muitas vezes a gente tirou do local. A gente está vendo uma capoeira se restabelecendo, que são condição prévia de possibilidade de uma floresta depois. Eu, a gente vê como muito importante né, gerar opções de fruticultura nativa aqui para para a região, né? A gente está na grande Florianópolis, de uma cidade que necessita de alimentos de qualidade, né? Uma população crescente. É muito mais interessante, né, a restauração e a regeneração com fruticultura e madeira nativa, né, do que trabalhar como muitos outros pontos da serra, como eucalipto, ou com pinos, em plantios uh, monoculturais, né, que geram poucas opções, né, e não geram autonomia para o território, né, com uma floresta tão magnífica, tão exuberante, que a gente tem condição de estimular que se reinstale no território de forma saudável e biodiversa. Uma questão muito delicada, né, que é muito importante para a gente, é poder achar um tom para falar sobre as implicações reais né, de você trabalhar com uma agricultura de floresta. A agricultura de floresta não é como pensam às vezes as pessoas sob o ponto de vista da restauração ecológica que você vai plantar uma floresta e ela nunca vai ser mexida ou que você nunca vai mexer numa floresta as agriculturas ancestrais que são as agriculturas para quais a gente remete elas são agriculturas de manejo de floresta o que fazemos deixa um rastro de floresta mas nós não temos questões com derrubar algumas árvores para produzir. Não é você derrubar a floresta e fazer roça a vida inteira e nunca mais devolver para poder daí ter uma área de preservação ao lado. Não, não é isso. É plantarmos floresta, derrubarmos floresta, construirmos floresta e sempre que mexermos, plantarmos florestas biodiversas, complexas, sucessionais, estratificadas né, no tempo, com espécies importantes da região. Essa é uma região né, que perdeu, por exemplo, uma quantidade. A gente fala da guabiroba, mas da jabuticaba. Há várias plantas que se perderam do regime das florestas aqui e que nós acreditamos que é possível restaurar. Construir solo, algo que tem que ser feito com madeira. Não há nada que substitua a madeira. Porque a madeira é a cama onde a vida se organiza. né? Então é um ciclo, a gente reconstrói as condições de existência de um lugar que foi degradado pela agricultura anterior. You need to be trained in agroforestry and understanding how to organize species, how to manage, how to plant things, what to plant. I encourage you, go learn about agroforestry. If you want, I have a free training. It's three hours long, Food Forest Family. There's a link below. I just want the information out there, the education accessible, so that more people can do this regenerative work. It's like a popsicle of the soil. There's so much water in that thing, it's delicious. Peruvian ground apple, it's a root, it's a tuber. It's a prebiotic, really good for your gut. Super tasty, it's also a really great soil conditioner. If you just leave it, if you don't harvest it, it turns into this really nice, beautiful, dark, rich soil. We're week two here in South Brazil. The time has flown by so quickly. It's been an incredible experience. I'm really glad that I came here. It's such a similar environment to New Zealand, a little bit more cold, temperate. The species are really similar. Life just feels really rich right now. It feels so supreme. And, and even with the fellowship, I get to connect with people all over the world, like every other day. Life is feeling really full right now. 
it sounds corny because like everybody says, ah, oh, you just gotta like do the thing that scares you, but you really do. You really have to do the thing that you're not sure you can pull off. If you were sure you could pull it off, it wouldn't be exciting. This is an exploration in finding the cutting edge of agroforestry, learning from other practitioners, going to see older sites. But whatever your thing is, find that cutting edge. That's what I'm trying to do with the fellowship. I'm trying to level everybody up in there, distribute what I'm learning on my cutting edge so that everybody gets better. If you feel stagnant, that's a sign that you need to prune. The person that's constantly pruning their food forest, the person that's constantly challenging themselves. I'm constantly trying to put myself into new environments and new spaces where I know I'm not good, where I know I need to level up, but it's gonna force that by going through the process, by walking through the steps, which sometimes feel ugly, they feel hard, they, they're difficult. You're pruning big trees down. Make room for new growth, make room for new evolution. That's what you do in the agroforestry. You move the succession forward, you create opportunities. Your latent potential is waiting on you. It's dependent on those interventions. And if you never do it, man, whatever thing you're thinking of right now, that, that's what, like, there's a reason you're thinking of it. Awesome day. Yeah. What do we do? Basically, you organized organic matter. So in the future, we're going to have a Jusada forest over here. And you were on the chainsaw all day, man. Yeah, we're, we were going on the lines to make them more beautiful, you know, easy to see, easy to plant. Good shit, man. Such a fun time doing agroforest, I guess. Yeah. It's just like the most satisfying thing you can do. It's just inner pleasure. Yes, yeah. yes. For the same reason that yes. the ants cut the leaves and do their work, it just yeah. feels good. Yeah. yeah, feels right, feels like, yeah. <laughs> On the surface, it kind of looks intense, right? You're cutting a lot of trees down and it's easy to feel like that's a bad thing. The intergenerational lens, understanding that we are starting a new cycle, but at the same time, uh, from a much better place as well, because these woods putting down are bringing more uh, fertility. The forests we have here, the good uh, wood, and including Jusadas have been taken down. So what are we doing now? Doing our function, like making the place more syntropic, so more complex. So we are bringing back the complexity that it had, but it doesn't have any more the genetics of some uh, good old growth trees. But to do this, you cannot just plant the seed in the ground. You need to open some light, you need disturbance. It was a feeling for sure inside me. I was like, whoa, we're like here at the edge of the rainforest, like cutting trees down. Yeah. We should be fighting against, like, why are we cutting yeah. trees down? We should be protecting these trees. And yeah. it was just definitely like, even as somebody who's like been doing agroforestry for a few yeah. years, it's like, yeah. it's such a different kind of agroforestry that I hadn't been exposed to. Yeah. It was a bit shocking for me. So I can imagine that somebody who's not into agroforestry that aren't familiar, yeah. they see it and they're like, this is bad. We're cutting yeah. trees down. Yeah. No good. Mm -hmm. yeah. This understanding of like a systemic view that nature thrives through succession. If you have a primary rainforest, you remove the climax species, the good wood, cut everything. Like this is being regenerating, but without these seeds and seedlings of these good climax species. So what we are doing, we are getting this early succession and we are putting this climax species inside them. But to do this, you have to make a disturbance. We want to make this disturbance so it can flourish the climax species. So we are like, yeah, doing our part of the job to make it faster. Otherwise, if it, we leave to nature, it will have to have a bird to bring the seed. But like, we are the birds, like, even like this, like, we are, it's one of our, our things to Function. do in na functions in nature, like to bring seeds and good genetics. Yeah, we're kind of organizing forests to have more forest faster. Because those people that harvest the best wood of the forest and leave, they're thinking about the individual and leaving that forest without those players in the game, let's say. You know, you need to have the whole team <laughs> working on. So we're going to be harvesting Jusada in that area really soon, growing food in the forest, I would say. <laughs> it's a good life doing agroforestry. That was a great day of agroforestry. What a nourishing life. Good people, good work, meaningful. Keep growing.
I'm in a new state in Brazil. I'm in the furthest south state, Rio Grande do Sul. Now there's a Rio Grande do Norte, which is where I was last year, the far north corner. Totally different climate you can see. Again, got the hoodie on, it's cold. And I've just come to this really interesting eco-village. Previously, it was all tobacco, right? This region, especially where I'm at right now, Santa Cruz, that's the industry here. All this landscape used to be just really poisoned tobacco and kids get sick, adults get sick, people have mental health problems because of all the exposure to these chemicals. Apparently the suicide rate here is super high per capita compared to most of Brazil. Right now I'm just really enjoying arriving at this beautiful house. They've got this like epic little earth construction house. I'll show you a little bit inside. And then straight into the forest, right out the back door. Spoke to Nico yesterday, Nicolas, he's the owner of Sicho Nascente, which is where we spend a lot of time doing the cabruca. This study of opening the canopy to put inside other species who are native, but we don't have more in the forest. Like Jussara, Imbuya, Peroba, that was all cut. There is no more. So when we look to the forest, for one who looks for outside and don't have a good perception, just look a very green and beautiful place with animals, with plants, but it's still very degraded and it's difficult to the ecologists from the university, from the offices, to realize that we must to interact in this environment to improve this production, because if we don't have some production from the forest and the forest don't have value in our capitalism way of think, that will no longer exist. We like to keep the forest just to make environmental services, but in the reality, to the farmers, if they don't have income directly from the forest, they don't have any motivation to plant forest. The full video of that is in the fellowship if you're interested in seeing all the, all the full videos of everything, really, all the deep dive conversations. Everything you're seeing here is clips. This is really exciting. We're at this incredible farm. We're gonna go fly the drone in the eucalyptus where they've just recently been pruned, really well managed, beautiful system. Welcome to the jungle, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle. Let's go check his systems out. They're incredible. We're at Amadeo's place here in the far south of Brazil and we're learning the ropes. We got the 10 year old systems pruning the eucalyptus. It's about to come down. We've got a guava, avocados, bananas below. A loquat, ice cream bean, parana nut, citrus. That's super impressive. We got Amadeo in the house using the sugoi, the saw from Silky. Samurai, Beautiful. black belt. <laughs> black belt samurai. That's yeah. what this guy is. A escada dá uma falsa sensação de segurança porque ela pode cair. Então a gente vai testar o equipamento da da cadeira para se sentir mais confortável em cima da árvore também. Segurança importante. <laughs> and you step Super quick, took like 30 seconds, just with the handsaw. Silky Sugoi, there's a discount code if you're in New Zealand. Best tools ever. <laughs> Pulling motion only, all right? So they don't cut on the push, they only cut on the pullback. Quase mais rápido que motosserra. Mais segurança, pouca força, muito afiado, parabéns. Qualidade, gostei. Quero testar mais. Continuamos os testes. <risos> Grande teste. A hora dela verdade. Vamos fazer um eucalipto um pouco maior, testar o desempenho da ferramenta. <risos> It's a big tree, you can see that right there. 
This is really fun. So what we're doing right now is we're in Amadeo's six to 10 year old agroforestry system, bringing down some eucalyptus tops. Most of them have been pruned once, some of them haven't. So there's some big eucalyptus in there. He's training me on like pruning older eucalyptus. I'm training him on using a harness system. And so we're both learning. I was sending the drone up. We were watching exactly what he was doing, getting together with other practitioners and doing it and seeing what practices are working well. That's how you do it. Well done, man. Beautiful job. Yeah, brother. Muito bom. Serrote, sem barulho, sem gasolina. E agora a sucessão aqui, araucária, vai assumir aqui o extrato emergente. Outras também muita fruta nativa. Aqui tem uma cereja do Rio Grande. Ela tem esse caule verde, diferencia das outras. Uma fruta excelente também. All these incredible species. The primary action is pruning. The primary action to like move that succession forward. Sim. The e... araucária take the place. All these other things flush with growth and fruit. E todas That's plantadas juntos no mesmo tempo, eucalipto no mesmo tempo. E agora a gente acelera o processo utilizando o material do eucalipto, as raízes também que ele que ficam drenos de água para baixo do solo. Eucalipto, grande amigo nosso da agrofloresta. Não deixamos ninguém falar mal dele. É um grande aliado, mas com certeza as pessoas que plantarem tem que ter alguém para manejar, com um amigo ou ou mesmo aprender a escalada, porque realmente se ele crescer muito ele fica difícil. Aqui foi um exemplo, essa poda já estava um pouco difícil agora, pela altura, estava uma dificuldade um pouco maior do que o normal. O ideal é deixar um pouquinho mais baixo ele. Let's go! Oh. Resolvendo esse problema. What a pleasure to have the opportunity to learn in such an old system. É um bom momento para plantar uma, uma coisa aqui embaixo, também aproveitar essa luz que abriu, uma abóbora, uma cúrcuma, encontrar espaço para uma erva mate. É isso, cansado. <laughs> so we're going to make use of the opportunity, right? You start by pruning the highest things, letting these like climax emergent species start to take their place by removing a lot of these eucalypt heads. E aqui também plantar com sem medo de de cortar, né? A gente plantar um número maior do que a gente deseja. Aos poucos a gente retirando e escolher as, as melhores, né? Então é usando um pouco da inteligência da natureza, de plantar com abundância, para depois nós, como seres humanos, animais, escolherem, subir nas árvores. Like a monkeys. Yeah, brother. This is technical agroforestry. And this is what it looks like to put the reps in. Right now I feel like I'm a blue belt. I am a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, but I also feel like I'm a blue belt in agroforestry. I've been practicing for a few years now. I have some skills some foundational knowledge. But the more you play the game, the more you realize there's an infinite amount that you can learn. And a lot of it comes down to who you're spending time around, which is why I make an effort to come to Brazil, Costa Rica, Florida, all these places where agroforestry practitioners are on that cutting edge, exploring, using new techniques. That's how we learn. That's what life is about, so. So we're gonna give an awesome gift to Amadeo. Silky have been super generous and gifted us hand saws, pruning saws, arborist saws, all for the people who are here in Brazil doing the work that we admire. What we're doing is we're sharpening the machete the way that Tiago taught me. Can't be an agroforest with a dull machete. I used to sharpen like this from the, pe the place that is not cutting to the other, but uh, there was always like a little metal part that could go. So I started sharpening like this. You are taking metal from here and putting here. This right here is why you prune your emergent trees first. We're pruning the eucalyptus, crushed half the guava. Now, if we'd come through and already really nicely pruned and shaped the guava, and then it broke half, it's a worse situation to be in than leaving the guava unpruned, knowing that something like this might happen, and then you can recover, then you can fix the guava to balance it. Put them in your mush. Yeah. <laughs> you want to remove all the damage. Then I was just seeing that there's damage all the way down here. We're going to cut this at the kneecaps. Mais jovem, tá bonita. So we're synchronizing, right? We just took this eucalypt down, pruning heavily this immediate area. So there's a citrus right here. All these things around we're gonna synchronize. Get them on that growth pulse and just make the place better than you found it. A gente já tirou bastante agora, talvez observar um pouco mais. Já está perfeito. Tem the nice Castellari clippers. Incredible. Black belt. These are the uh, Castellaris that Josh recommended from Italy. These are like the Ferraris of hand clippers. Because they're double bladed. It's not 
bypass or it's on an anvil clipper two blades so there's no damage to the cambium like when you make a cut you re disturb the cambium but if you make a really like gnarly ugly cut it takes longer to heal and then it takes longer to regrow but if you leave a nice clean cut for the cambium much better for regrowth much better for agroforestry cascalaris ferrari pan clippers the way you're making decisions around how to prune a guava tree the early succession tree exists to be pruned as a staircase to climb so you can reach the climax fruit. Using the ice cream bean as a ladder to prune the avocado. Take the head out, redirect a lot of the growth into the lower part of the tree where it's gonna start fruiting, easy to access. What you doing? Fast, fast, fast. Yeah. <laughs> now, big one. across this flooded river right now. All right, we spent all day driving here yesterday. We made it to Gramado. It's beautiful. I mean, this is just spectacular. I know I'm sick. This landscape is making me feel better. <laughs> Holy cow. But man, it's definitely cold here. Cold tolerant species, we've got the fire going inside. Cozy little cabin, bananas are all frosted. Check this out. This is what the bananas look like at my place. Super frosted, but still producing. Fijo, native to this area, this ecosystem of Brazil. I mean, I'm just blown away by how diverse Brazil is. It's a really rich diversity of ecosystems. This is amazing. Day two here at the cabin with Amadeo, Jonas, and Mateo. By the way, Mateo's truck is like the agroforestry weapon. It's super cool. This is a climate so similar to New Zealand's here in Gramado, the high hills of South Brazil really dramatic landscapes, big rivers, steep. You can see the landscape out here, it's incredible. Where we're sitting is on this ridge. The agroforestry has been super interesting. It's not so inspired by Ernst Goch here. It's apparently what I'm learning is more inspired by the native indigenous cultures. It's actually been a crazy four months traveling nonstop. I didn't have a plan when I came here. Just like last year, there was no plan. I knew I wanted to be in the south of Brazil, study, document, practice. But beyond that, I didn't really have a plan. And I think when you trust the universe like that, the universe always has your back. It's been rough being sick. It's probably a blessing. It's probably the opportunity that I needed to reset before the next chapter unfolds because I don't get to go home just yet. Three weeks of traveling around with the pioneers as part of this international agroforestry immersion experience. One of the themes of this trip, this new chapter in my life beyond just coming back to Brazil, is just seeing how much more responsibility I can voluntarily take on. If I can take on more responsibility, I will grow in proportion to that. Yo, how you liking the song, man? Because it would have been easy to come here and to just do it like I did last year, 
no responsibility for anybody or for anything really. This time I've decided to launch an online business in the middle of four months of travel, organize this three week immersive experience in an international place here in Brazil. It gives you no choice but to grow. Just like the agroforestry system, you prune to grow, you clear space, you open new light, and the same exact thing happens in your own life upward spiral. Make the big scary decision. It's not always easy pruning in an agroforestry, but I encourage you as much responsibility as you can voluntarily take on and handle. See how much it is. You can always back down. There have been moments where I've let the ball drop. That's all part of it, but I'd rather be juggling 28 things and drop a few than only have one happening. Figuring out new growth edges. We talk a lot about that in permaculture design and agroforestry is considering your limiting factors, but we don't often think about them in our personal lives or in our businesses. Paying attention to your constraints, looking at your dragons dead in the eye, that's how you level up, it's how you grow. Brazil, round two, life-changing. See you all very soon for more epic agroforestry and growth content. This area, the whole... The beginning of this work was done with Antonio Turhan. Un abrazo, Antonio Turhan.